Well, we are at the end. Nearly. Nearly at the end. <laughs> but we would like to quickly do a shout out to Palmer Bet. They are our official wagering sponsor. Head online to, and download their app. There are actually some interesting odds for the next fight. So, we've got Andrew Patara paying $2. Hang on, hang on. We're just talking about the odds. Just hold on. $2.05 versus Ryan Levey, $1.70. So, head on there, <laughs> place your bets, change the odds. Over to you. Now you can cheer because this is an amateur lightweight fight. Introducing first, Andrew Batara. And here we go. We've got Andrew A.O. Patara fighting at its Game Bread Academy and Ignite Martial Arts. Good song. <laughs> Love a happy song. I'm going to throw it over to Matt Walton. This is his favourite song from what I hear. Damn, yeah, my phone's ringing. Yeah, I think the smartest thing a fighter can do is put me on a banger like this for your walkout song. Because again, he might have sold 100 tickets, but right now he has a thousand people backing him right now. So this is phenomenal. But uh, yeah, can't the crowd wait is yeah. going mental for it. So is Andrew. <laughs> so Andrew joins us for his third walk to the cage. He's got a one win, one loss record. I love when you're talking to him. What's your improvements, mate? And if anyone's proved, watch his last fight, checking leg kicks. <laughs> it's one of the things he's been working on the most. <laughs> Understandably so. Yeah, didn't he come out like a savage when he made his debut? It was ruthless. Super explosive. Yeah. And again, this is one of those fights where, you know, you kind of sit back as you, the more, the deeper and deeper you get into MMA, you start to hate fights like this. Because I love Andrew Patara and I love Ryan Levy as well. And right now, someone's going to get hurt. Yeah, I, um, I've got a lot of time for both these young lads. And that's the thing, you want them to showcase all their skills without hurting the other person. But we're not watching soccer here, this is MMA. I really see this being a power versus endurance fight. Ryan Levy can just go pitter patter, pitter patter like a Diaz brother for the whole round. Yeah, he, he puts a pace on, but Andrew's got power. And please welcome his opponent, Ryan Levy. And Ryan, the natural Levy, coming out of Tribal MMA. Mate, there's so many good things to say about Tribal MMA. Been there a couple of times. Great bunch of guys. And really, really good quality family guild. You've got Connor and Paul Birch. But a whole bunch of assassins there as well. And we're looking at a kid like Ryan Levy, like we looked at, uh, you know, Brooke earlier, you know, 15 years old. Ryan Levy is 21 and he's now walking in for his eighth fight. You know, I was looking at the stats before, Ryan made his debut in XFC 37. Feels like 15 years ago. You know, this was back when Jackson Small was taking on Jai Brandy for the title. That was ages ago. No long ago. So for a kid that still seems so young, the, the vast amount of experience he has under his shoulders is phenomenal. And, you know, you, you hear the cliche every time when the fighters say that, you know, every fight camp they they skill up. Ryan Levy does that. Ryan Levy adds so much to his game every time he steps into the cage. And he doesn't take easy fights. This is his eighth fight walking the cage. Three wins, four losses. But in saying that, it's the quality of caliber of people he's fighting against. It's a, it's the uh, the Paul Birch mentality. Every time we go to him with the with the recommendation, all he says is, "Give us the toughest fight." Who's the toughest bloke you can put in front of us? And that is from from his son Connor to everyone that gets uh, gets put in front of us for a nomination. I want to know if this is a cheat code. Ryan Levy has uh, David Mark Nairs down as one of his uh, co-fighters. For those who do know the scene. He's a game bred Ignite boy. So, uh, David Martinez does do a lot of cross training with uh, Tribal MMA as well. So, you wonder just how much uh, knowledge has been imparted on him as well. And really this next fight is fight an amateur team. lightweight fight. B class rules, three by three minute rounds. Introducing first in the blue corner.
weighing in at 70.5 kilos with an amateur record of one win, one loss. Fighting out of Game Red Academy, Andrew AP Batara. And his opponent in the red corner, he weighed in at 69.8 kilograms, holding an amateur record of three wins, four losses. Fighting at a tribal MMA. Give it up for Ryan Lee. Your referee in charge is Nakia Melody. Not all this yeah, yeah, really. And he's got a lot of confidence walking into here again. You know, anyone would look at. Uh, uh, Andrew Patara's first fight and say, geez, you know, maybe not. Maybe I don't want to take that sort of fight. But every time we've mentioned it, Ryan Levy has been absolutely biting at the nail to grab this fight. I awesome. mentioned that Diaz style. He's so uh, tall. He just puts it on, fighter. doesn't he? He's just getting his range at this stage. Huge opportunity for both boys to co-main event their Ooh. first title, their first uh, XFC show. That's right. He's just so focused at the moment, Ryan is. Tell you what, Andy's just kind of waiting to throw that big, big hand. He's just keeping him out of range of his jab, grabbing that front hand to be annoying. Yeah, I'm sure Ryan's happy to have taken a look at that uh, that power there as well. He would have been expecting that explosiveness to. Uh, to not get touched over the first little exchange they would be happy with. And he's got a few boys similar in his gym. Uh, Cole's an example, very similar build to Andrew. So he's got plenty of training partners that can mimic his style. Yeah, Andrew Patara there acknowledged that little jab that came through from Ryan there. Ryan's very, very busy. Yeah, nice head movement there from Patara as well. Yes. <laughs> Just holding that hand, going, you're not jabbing me with the hand, matter if I'm holding it. Oh. Oh. So strong is Andrew. Oh, just slipped over the top at the same time as Ryan was going for a takedown. Just that winging punches from Andrew that just seem to go from really weird angles. They're hard to prepare for because. When people are preparing, they're preparing to punch straight, and then oh. all, all of a sudden there's a windmill chopping on your head. He was looking down in his corner, um, talking to Lonnie, and uh, Ryan snuck a big right knee up to his head. I don't think he was expecting the uh, dexterity. How good is it to see Jason Lonigan in the corner of uh, Gamebred as well? He normally leaves that for his uh, for his fighters and his, his coaching team. Yeah, he was um, he was there with. They had the super corner with Ryan Dunstan for Darcy as well. They're certainly all here today. And Ryan's just keeping Andrew honest here as well, utilizing that range. Ooh, beautiful head movement. Yeah, speaking of Paul Birch out the back. Oh, oh nice question mark, mark quick. That was so nice. This is what Ryan needs to do is just keep him out at range with those long straight punches. Exactly what Paul Birch mentioned out the back. You know, they. They know that uh, Andrew Patara is dangerous. Uh, they're going to use Ryan's range here. And he's doing that perfectly right now. I mentioned before, he's one of the most dangerous people walking backwards. He's just constantly striking. Nice body shot there from Patara. And the gamesmanship between the two boys as well. Hard to score around like that, I feel, for the judges when there's a lot of fainting and waiting to take your shot. And this is the, the experience you can see coming through. Like the amateur scene nowadays is so much getting better and better and better. This levels up every time. Yeah, I think Ryan's really respecting the, the co-main event slot as well. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's proving uh, that both men are, are incredibly professional, incredibly skilled. He's treating this as a three round fight, isn't he? He wasn't just in there just to try and crowd a highlight. He's making the most of this opportunity. And that comes as growth as a fighter and, and your fight IQ increasing as well.
Here's a prediction. I reckon Andrew throws one of those huge overhands and drops to a double. Wow. Put five bucks on it? Yeah, right. <laughs> Is this going to be at the same time that Ryan's throwing it? Oh, we what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, as he's doing that, Ryan throws a knee up the bread vase. <laughs> We're just going to... You're just going to have the whole fight dialogued out by the time the round starts. <laughs> okay, Palmer Bet, put that one on. What's the odds? Okay, here we go. Oh, you can just see that explosion there's hey, but Yeah. Pataras has got a different level of power. He just comes across, you know, when you train with those blokes that... The power is just different. Yeah. It, it, it basically exudes that. Yeah, I try to skip those rounds. <laughs> <laughs> nice little thud there from Levy as well on his kick. Yeah. I like to see Levy, Levy pick up the tempo a little bit. He's got, seems to have found his range now. Yep. Yeah, he had a little bit of success with that question mark kick as well. So I know that's something that Connor Birch likes to play with. See, I'd like that to come out at the end of the second or third round, not at the first. And they're not expecting it. Just creep up over that left shoulder. But nice feints here as well. Ooh, big right kick. And you can see on the outside of the left leg for the car. Oh, both stalking each other now. So a bit of a red mark just above the calf muscle there. Perfect location to start keep peppering those legs. Yeah, boys, do you think Tribal focused on that calf as well? Does. Oh. oh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think they watched tape of the previous fight. That made a huge difference. Yeah, it is starting to get red there. Takes away a lot of power. Oh, Ooh. that's beautiful Muay Thai, isn't it? That's classic Jose Aldo. Very nice. And it can be oh, disheartening as well. When you're throwing at that much power and not hitting anything. Ryan's doing a great job here, but he has to be wary. Andrew has knockout power in those hands. And he's swinging them with no regard for human life. He just wants to end Ryan. Yeah, it really looks like he's starting to load up that right hand, isn't it? Yeah, Batara looks like he's about to sit on that. Sit on his heels and throw the right hand. Classic combo. One, two, body kick. And he's doing it well. He's waiting for Ryan to be locked up against the cage. So he has no escape route. Which once again comes to fight IQ. Ryan was doing well, circling to his left, taking away his, uh, Andrew's power. <laughs> oh, I love it when they acknowledge. Yeah, you had me there. Yeah, both boys are throwing a lot of feints. So uh, it'll be an interesting third round to see if they actually start capitalizing on uh, what they're reading from yeah. those feints. Definitely the most calculated I've seen Ryan Levy in a fight by a substantial margin, I think. And maybe that's, I'd say that's what Paul Birch has told him through the last few weeks leading up to the fight. You've got a foot reach. Don't waste it. Don't get hurt doing something silly. You've got all of the tools to win this fight without getting hurt. Let's use them. Which sometimes can be different to watch from the outside, but you're the one in there. You're the one trying not to get hurt. Yeah, interesting enough in the corner there, Andrew Patara taking off his uh, ankle protectors, uh, little compression socks that he was wearing. I've never actually worn those, boys. What are they for? I have no idea. I know the Muay Thai guys do them to, so they, if they F their ankles up, they can keep going usually. I'm thinking he took them off because that slip earlier in the round. So he may have felt that contributed to him slipping. So he wants to remove any advantage or any disadvantage that he has. Both boys looking incredibly refreshed and energized. I reckon they're up for a big third round here, boys. I'm also liking as uh, you haven't noticed the key melody at all. Like this is your high level refereeing at its best. Letting the boys do their job. 
Yeah, he doesn't get enough credit. I reckon he's one of the best referees in the game. He certainly lets him have a go and uh, continue on. I'll still never forgive him the time he fed me four of uh, Southside's brown belts. <laughs> A little bit of a low blow. That's okay. You know, something we never do, we never really talk about uh, <laughs> look at Batara, what a class <laughs> act. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something we never do, we never really try and get involved in the, the, the judging here, but how do you score those first two rounds? I, I think Ryan landed a little bit more shots, but Andrew Lennon, the harder ones, I honestly have no idea. I'd like to have an answer, but not for this one. So the 10-point mass scoring system goes on striking and submissions. If you can't pick a winner there, you well, then go to octagon control. If you can't pick a winner there, you go to aggression. Again, they're, they're very similar, aren't they? You know, you Really hard. Patara's this... pushing forward. Can you go 10-10, 10-10, 10-10? That's right, why not? <laughs> Oh, so oh, wow. And he's getting angry now. He's yeah. going for front kick. It was caught, so he changed to a side kick. Oh, there's that question mark kick. Found its spot that time. Not enough venom on it to uh, really pressure Andrew, though. Now, this is our 14th fight of the night. Have we seen a fighter stick to their game plan as solidly as Ryan Levy has tonight? And he would be the one person I'd expect to not do it as well. Oh, that's just really smart fight IQ. Oh, beautiful body shot from Patara there. And this is where um, Andrew's just walking him down. Oh, you can see the red mark on the right side of Ryan Levy's ribcage there. And Ryan doesn't capitalise on that as well. He goes, uh, you know what, I'm going to earn it. If you go down, I'm earning it. But look at that welt on the left half as Ryan throws two crosses down the line. Yeah, perfectly in range the entire time. He's, he's avoided that damage, hasn't he? Oh, he got that right cross right through. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> a, a flying knee followed by a cross mid-air. Oh, there we go. Here we are. The boys are putting it all out there. Last 10 seconds. Last 10. Here we go. What do we got? Oh. <laughs> Give them another two rounds. Sign another contract, boys. Let's go five rounds. Two more rounds. Let's go. Can we change it now? <laughs> I feel like they've got enough in the tank. Again, Jason Lonigan, Paul Burt straight in there smiling. I <laughs> know oh, why Jason Lonigan's in there. He's showing off that new head tattoo. Oh, yeah. I went <laughs> the up only and, reason. I went up and had a deep look at it. There's a tiger in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know what you're up to, Jason. <laughs> What a fight. Let's see that again. Those boys will fight again. Did anyone tell them they're allowed to grapple? <laughs> well, the one thing we do know is that I'm up five bucks. <laughs> yeah. There was no grappling happening in that fight. <laughs> oh, man. How do you judge it? No idea. Yeah. But it's very, it, usually when I say I have no idea, I have an idea, but this one, I'm... I actually would be happy for a draw. I don't mind. I mean, I think Ryan Levy had Octagon control. But do you see that if the other guy's going forward the whole time? Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Katara was walking forward, but Ryan was in that distance yeah. that he wanted the entire fight. I guess it just depends what sort of judge you are for this one. Yeah. That's the thing though, both boys, absolute gentlemen. And I'm, I'm really glad for that. They got to showcase their skill without pain, without, without anyone getting seriously hurt, so. Yeah, 
Yeah, dangerous opponent for both boys. For sure. And again, you've got to think Ryan Levy's uh, ecstatic to be leaving this fight with her. Uh, again, a face that's recognisable, knowing the uh, the power that Andrew Patara's got in his hands. That might be a bit of a telling factor as well with the way that the fight went. You know, when you you possibly look at the damage caused. It could even just come down to the outside calf kicks by Levy. I think that's probably the most marked thing under uh, Andrew's left eye and on his left calf. Trying to uh, lip read the judges, sorry, the, uh, the MCs here. I love the fact it's taken him so long to choose. I think they're waiting to uh, see who's got a coin so they can flip it. Yeah, I think so. After long deliberation, the winner of this fight by split decision. 29-28 to red. 30-27 to blue. Is all blue? 29-28. To blue, the winner of this fight in the blue corner, Andrew A.P. Patara. Yeah, Ryan, very upset with that decision there. I'm disappointed that for Ryan, but also I'm sure if he goes back and watches, he's like, I probably should have pulled the trigger here and here and here and here. Yeah, he's got those other gears, you're right. Oh, yeah. Lonnie got the biggest smile on his face. How bad is Lonnie's fashion sense? Just saying. Oh, it's disgusting. He couldn't be allowed in the cage. I saw him out at Warwick and I was like, you are the awkwardest, toughest guy I've ever met in my life. Lonnie. Did you say he shouldn't be allowed out of the <laughs> yeah, cage? Yeah. Because <laughs> he's an absolute beast in it. <laughs> by Dolly Parton, but you really did. And then you followed up with a split decision win. But back on the winner's column, how are you feeling? Ah, uh, man, firstly, Ryan, bro. That was a fucking dig, bro. Should be proud of yourself, bro. Like, that was tough, man. That, e that could have gone either way, but yeah. Ah, uh, man, feel good, eh? Feel good. I knew it was going to be a tough fight, but we, we get it done in the end, eh? Well, you chased him down. I think that, uh, that, you know, the height difference made a big change for you. So did you stick to your game plan or did you have to change it at some point? There was a little bit of conversation between you two. Seemed like a lot of respect between, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, this canvas here is fucking very slippery. So, um, my, please, stop in there. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, I feel good. Did he feel good. Uh, it was, uh... I was very shocked that he, he actually wanted to have those exchanges thing. with me. Yeah. Usually no one does, but for that, man, big respect, bro. Big respect. So. Well, you got a lot of fans here. Anybody in particular you'd like to thank? Hey. That's my fucking boys out there. Uh, man, a lot of them traveled a very long way to get here. I got a couple of the boys that came from PNG. Uh, one of my dockers down there came all the way from Sydney. Rest of the boys are out here, man. Like, hey, we're just here for a good time, but yeah. All right, everyone, give it up for Andrew. <laughs> lastly, 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 um, my coaches, man. Bro, they're the real MVPs, man. I'm just, I'm just a vessel. Everything, all the knowledge they put into me, and I just come out here and do it, man. So, big respect to my team, man. Eh? Cheers, everyone. Have a good night. Well, congratulations, my friend.